Hey guys, I'm Christina Berge, an evolutionary biologist. Uh, long story short, I convinced my husband to shave his beard off so I could do a woefully underpowered science experiment about beards and attractiveness and make this video about the evolutionary reasons why men and, and some non-men have beards. There was once a man who was forced for unknown reasons to live in relative isolation on an island for several weeks at a time. People are social beasts and, and tend to go squirrely when left all alone, and, and we can surmise that this was the case with this fellow. He noticed that when he was stuck on the island, his, his beard growth slowed down compared to when he was on the mainland. I guess to have something to pass the time, he took to quantifying this by measuring how much hair was inside his razor after his daily shave. Funnily enough, he saw that his rate of hair growth spiked before he was about to get to the mainland. It was as if his beard was anticipating his reunion and sexual liaison with his lady friend. And this guy was a scientist, and he knew that beard growth was linked to sex hormone levels like testosterone. So he hypothesized that his facial hair was growing and testosterone was spiking because his body was anticipating the sex he was going to have on the mainland once his period of forced isolation ended. And putting aside the improbability that a woman would have regular sex with a man who weighed his beard clippings, there were some questions about the veracity of his conclusions. Other scientists worried about possible confounding issues, like whether he might be giving himself a closer shave in anticipation of doing the deed. So one man, an early expert on snail genetics, and a eugenicist, I should note, suggested that the anonymous beard trimmer ought, in the interests of science, to try abstaining from sexual activity during some of the, his returns to civilization. He said it would be even better if the lady concerned might be persuaded to cooperate in the experiment by unexpectedly withholding her favors during certain of his visits chosen at random. It doesn't seem like the letter writer was willing to make that sacrifice to advance human knowledge, however. To explain the case of the horny island shaver, it's useful to ask what's the purpose of a beard? Like, why do people have them? And the evolutionary answer to why some trait exists is often, you know, because it helps you survive to have more babies. But beards can't really be explained by traditional Darwinian natural selection. Someone once tested the, you know, to me, ridiculous hypothesis that beards are adaptive because they provide a, a little protective cushion when getting punched in the face. So they looked at MMA fighters, but, but found that bearded guys were just as likely to be knocked out as unbearded fighters. It really doesn't seem that Darwin's original theory of natural selection can explain beards. But Darwin realized that not everything could be explained by natural selection. And consider the peacock, for instance. The male's fancy feathers increase the odds that he'll be spotted by a tiger and, and caught as he slowly, but beautifully, tries to flee. Natural selection should eliminate them. But if the fancy feathers uh, tickle the fancy of female peahens, then fancy feathered males will have more babies and pass on their fancy feather genes to their sons in the next generation. This is the first of the two kinds of sexual selection. Females choose males based on some trait, like fancy feathers, that's an honest signal of the quality of that male and his genes. So have beards evolved because women are attracted to bearded men because the beard signals his vigor and vitality and good genes? Well, you, you can break that question in two and, and first test whether women find men with beards hot. So to test this, a fellow named Dixon, who does have a slight beard for what it's worth, manipulated photos of men to vary their facial hair. And men with beards were deemed more attractive, at, at least for long-term relationships, uh, than unbearded men. Other studies haven't found the same link between beardedness and attractiveness, and they've also found it to vary between cultures or depending on how many people around you have beards, so it's not a completely simple story. And the second part, are beards an honest signal of male quality? Uh, beards are good signals of androgen production for sure, and men with beards are often perceived as having aggressive dominance, so photos of the same man making an aggressive face were rated as significantly more aggressive if the guy had a beard compared to the same man clean-shaven. This suggests that maybe women aren't the targets of beard signals. Maybe men are using beards to warn other men that they're aggressive and dominant. So that would mean beards fall under the other type of sexual selection, male-male competition. So maybe our Island Romeo's beard grew quickly before his mainland whoopee-making because the beard would signal to his Juliet that he was high status. Or maybe it was to signal to other males that he was dominant and aggressive, you know, not to be messed with in the great competition for mates. It's fun to wonder what evolutionary reasons led to the curious pattern of his facial hair, seemingly knowing that he was going to get some action in short order. Uh, all of this is a bit moot because he shaved his beard off daily, but maybe he would have gotten more action with a beard. As for our little science experiment, uh, my sample size was very low, n equals 1, but does removing a beard decrease attractiveness? <laughs> <sighs> he looks like a weird baby.